So what is celiac disease? It's a systemic autoimmune disease occurring in genetically susceptible individuals triggered by gluten protein in wheat, barley, and rye. Simple enough. Not so simple. Let's look at first what an autoimmune disease is. Autoimmunity is a situation where the body actually attacks itself. So it mistakens tissues for being things that shouldn't be there, and it starts to develop antibodies to get rid of that tissue, okay? In the case of celiac disease, it has to do with the, uh, the vela of the intestinal tract. Uh, in the case of thyroid disease, it has to do with the thyroid. In the case of the liver, it has to do with the liver. So there's a wide range of autoimmune type diseases that occur. So the rule used to be, and the way we used to think about things, is you've got genetic susceptibility, all right? That is, you have a tendency toward expressing these genes. There's some environmental trigger that occurs. There's an activation of the immune system that occurs as a result of the interaction of these two things. And then ultimately, there's the occurrence of avert disease. Now, you can run out and buy these new kits that will allow you to do genetic determination on yourself. And I want to hopefully convince you that that may not be the best, best thing to be doing for a variety of reasons uh, before the end of this lecture. The other thing you need to understand about this business of genetic susceptibility, we are born with a ton of genes that get shut down almost immediately after we're born and never, ever get expressed. So the expression of those genes is going to be a function of the environment in which we live. So just because you have the susceptibility does not mean that you'll express the gene. So if we look at celiac disease, the two genes that seem to be associated with is the human lymphocyte antigens, uh, the alleles are DQ2 and DQ8. All right, now, look at these statistics because they're very important. 30% of the general population has one of these HLA-associated alleles, 30%. But only 3% of individuals with these alleles who have one or both of them will actually express celiac disease. The presence of the alleles, and I want to emphasize again, is not diagnostic. So the overwhelming majority of people who have this genetic predisposition do not develop celiac disease. 